Welcome to Your Biz, Your Rules, the podcast for business-minded go-getters hosted by me, your favorite brain and biz coach, Dara Paddy. This is the spot for those of you ready to blend heart and head, woo and do, income and impact, change and chill, and so much more. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's get started. Welcome to episode 213 of Your Biz, Your Rules. In this show, I am going to provide a little treat for the time poor among you, or those of you who feel like there is just never quite enough time, so you always feel like you're on the back foot. In today's episode, I'm gonna be diving into 20 different tasks that take 10 minutes or less that can really be game changers for your business. These are tasks that can make all the difference, not just to the way you feel in your business, but also the results that you get. Now, this is not me saying that you have to try and do all of these things every day or all of these things every week. But if you do find yourself with a pocket of 10 minutes where you might find yourself mindlessly scrolling, maybe you could just come back to this episode and choose one of these instead. So without further ado, let's get to that list. Number one, clean your desk before you start work for the week. This is probably one of the things that makes the biggest difference to how I feel personally when I sit down at my desk on a Monday morning, when I have like polished the glass that covers my desk, when I have um, dusted everything, when I've swept, when I've mopped and everything is smelling like my favorite Zaflora scent. My workspace just feels nicer to be in. And by the way, this doesn't have to be restricted to the end of a week or the start of a week. Whenever you feel like your energy or your space needs a refresh, spend 10 minutes blitzing your workroom. Number two, write out a list of all your priorities for the week and decide which days you would like to do them. This is a great Monday morning task and it is actually how I start my Monday mornings. And this is not a really over the top restrictive planning system. It is simply me and a piece of paper brain dumping everything that I would like to get done in a week. So I will look at my project plans in Asana. I will, um, hit up my VA in Slack. I will check all of my emails. I will like read the past week of journal, like just flip through my journal entries for the past week. I will look through my planner for the past week and see if I've missed anything. And just also log any ideas that I have um, for things that are coming up. Um, Looking at my calendar is helpful too. So I know if there are any calls that I need to factor in. And I will just make sure I've got all of these things on one piece of paper in one list. And then I will simply start spreading them throughout the week. So again, you can do this on paper, just write out the days of the week or pick a different highlighter color for each day of the week, whichever way you wanna go and assign days to the different tasks. And this isn't set in stone. Like if on one day you have no energy or on another day you have tons of energy, there is nothing stopping you from um, switching up the list. Or if you notice that something requires information from someone else and they don't get it to you by Tuesday, which is when you'd assign this tax, just move it, like that's fine. But this is more about helping you feel less overwhelmed about the few days in front of you. And like you just have everything in hand because you do. Thing number three is to check in with your team in a very human way. So a couple of episodes ago back, to in episode 210 I believe I raved about my little team which it feels weird calling it a team because it is just me and one other person Danny my amazing VA but every Monday we will check in with each other sometimes this is via text and slack sometimes it's via voice note sometimes we'll have like a face-to-face call like we sort of mix it up but the main piece I want to drive home here is not just to dive straight into what are you doing for me this week or what did you do for me last week it's more like how are you how are you as a person like catch up in a personal way because there's something about feeling connected to the people that are working with you 
that just changes the way you feel day to day because when you feel like the other person cares, when you feel like they're invested, then you feel so much more supported, but you can't expect them to care and them to be invested if you don't care or feel invested in their lives, in their vision, in their business. So that's why I always try and start out our conversations with just checking in and seeing how she is. Thing number four, have a money date. I probably, I'm probably gonna do like a full episode on money dates um, sometime in the future because this is such a fantastic way to change the way you feel about money stuff and also amplify the amount of money that you are bringing in. And your money date can take various guises. It could be more like practical tasks such as logging your income, sending invoices, chasing payments, like that kind of thing. Or it could be more like wealth consciousness work. So maybe reading a chapter of a book or working through a personal development exercise, writing through a journal prompt, doing some tapping. There are many different ways or many different things that you can incorporate into your money day. I obviously like to combine both the practical and the energetic. That for me brings the greatest results. Um, But having at least one money day every single week can change the game in terms of how you feel about the money that you are bringing into your business and that you want to bring into your business. If you get really stuck here and you're not sure what to do in your money day, then I want to direct you to Unapologetic Wealth, which is my 33-day audio program. So in there, you actually receive daily audios to listen to. So there's a mixture of meditations, tapping scripts, and also hypnosis audios, as well as some sort of like practical journaling and planning questions. And if you incorporated just a few elements of those each day or even just each week, I guarantee that you would change the way you feel about building wealth, guaranteed. Thing number five, simply take an extra 10 minute break during your workday. That's it, take a break. Thing number six, jump on Instagram stories and just share what you're working on, a tip, a story, a thought, anything. Just something really, really brief. Thing number seven, turn your bundle of stories into a video and upload it to your Instagram grid. There are so many free apps out there that will allow you to just easily stitch together little clips of video. So download one of those now and just, you know, connect those story graphics and turn it into a longer form video. Thing number eight, turn the topic of that video into a written post and schedule it. So let's say for thing number six, you jumped on Instagram stories and you shared um, one tip for having a successful podcast batch day, right? And then for for step number seven, you turned that tip or those tips, maybe you gave them three tips, you turn those three tips into a longer form video. And then for thing number eight, you are just taking that same information, putting it into a written post where you describe the three tips in writing and maybe like have it with a selfie and schedule it for maybe a few days from now or a week from now. And then thing number nine is take that same post, that same written post and turn it into a carousel. So instead of having all of the content written in your caption, you would have like one tip on each image have obviously a title image and a call to action image. And you've got a carousel of five graphics there that you can schedule maybe another week later. So you see how you're sort of um, doing really small tasks now to build up a bit of a content pipeline that will have you covered for weeks to come. Thing number 10, make a carousel of images to promote your latest offer. Simple. So maybe you have just an outline of what it is, who it's for, why people need it, what's the incentive to buy it now, what are the features and benefits, something like that. Super, super simple. You don't have to overthink this or reinvent the wheel. Thing number 11, create a reel to promote your latest podcast, video, live stream, or blog post. Like if you have created a really juicy piece of content elsewhere, even if it's just an email to your list, create a little reel, a little snippet that shows people that thing. Thing number 12, 
sort your emails. And this does not have to be an overwhelming task. If you just chip away at it 10 minutes at a time, you can soon get to that nirvana that is inbox zero. My email filing system is super, super simple. I have a folder for actions I need to take. I have a folder for like waiting and follow up kind of emails. I have a folder for things that are done. I also have a one final folder for anything money related. So invoices, receipts, that kind of thing, just because then it's easier to find them all when it comes to doing my um, accounts. But really, if you just have an action, a pending and a done, you can navigate your emails so, so easily. So processing your emails would simply look like dragging things into the appropriate folder and responding to things that will take a minute or less, two minutes or less to deal with. Thing number 13, once a week, go through your action folder. So that action folder I mentioned of things that would need like more than two minutes of your time, go through that once a week. Thing number 14, email your list and ask them if they're still interested in one of the promises that you make. So for me, that might be something like, are you still interested in booking a new client this week? Are you still interested in um, coming up with a month's worth of content ideas in one setting? Are you still interested in um, putting together an irresistible group program? I could say any of those. And that's the entire email. And then when people respond and say yes, follow up with them, book a call, have a DM chat, however you like to communicate with people, but do something with the responses. Thing number 15, update your autoresponder if you have one or update your social media bio or um, just quickly review and update your work with me page. This is, those are three separate tasks really, um, but I've put them in one. Thing number 16, check in with the people that you'd love to work with. So I think I mentioned this back in episode 203, where I was talking about the planner hacks that I used to keep the vibe high. But I have this post-it note in my planner that has the names on of people that I would love to work with one-on-one, like people that I would love to have as clients. And every now and again, maybe once a month or so, I will reach out to them, I'll send them a voice note, nothing pushy, nothing pitchy, just a check in, a like, hi, how are you kind of situation. So if you have 10 minutes to spare, maybe you could go through all of the names on that post-it and just send them all a nice short voice note. Thing number 17, read a chapter of a book. We all have so many books that we buy to help us with a particular problem, whether that is personal development related or more professional development related. So spend that spare 10 minutes reading a chapter instead of mindlessly scrolling. If you're a little bit overwhelmed by all of the unread things on your shelves and you don't really know where to start, then I highly recommend you come along and join the Friends and Faves book club. It's a recent book club that I put together and each month we'll be diving into one either personal or professional development book and taking action on the things that we learn. If you want all of the information on that then check out last week's episode, episode 212 and you'll hear like not only how it works but also the first three book picks so you can have a little listen like decide whether they sound fun to you and then come along and join if you fancy it. Thing number 18 is similar, like do a piece of homework from a course that you've signed up for. We all have things like group programs, e-courses, webinars, whatever that we have registered for. Spend a slice of 10 minutes just taking action on something, filling in like one bit of your workbook, doing one bit of something that will help you move further towards that result that you've invested in. Thing number 19, schedule Facebook group posts for the week. So if you have a Facebook group, whether that is a paid group that goes with a course or program or a free community, schedule the posts that you have coming up this week. If you don't have a Facebook group, but you have some kind of other online community that maybe doesn't allow for scheduling, you can simply like write them out 
write out those posts or whatever like if you like to batch your content that way it'll just make it so easy so you don't have to think about it in the moment you don't have to come up with ideas and especially if you have like a cycle of regular posts that you use this is a very very quick task to tick off and then last but not least thing number 20 the thing that I personally do enjoy finishing my week with is review your task list from the past week so that master list that we created at the start of the week just take a look at it again what can you celebrate? What did you manage to tick off? What went well? What can you delete? What no longer feels important to you? Along those lines, maybe what can you delegate if you sort of want it done but don't want to have to do it? And last but not least, what do you need to pass to the next week? Because, you know, life has a way of lifing and we don't always have like a perfect score when it comes to productivity and more often than not we do over schedule ourselves and we put too many things on our to-do list so if there are things that you need to pass on to another week there is literally zero point judging yourself for it zero so don't bother just observe decide and move it along So there you have it, 20 really simple yet impactful things that you can do when you have a spare 10 minutes on your hands. I would love for you to take action on one of these today, anyone you pick, and share it in your Instagram stories. As always, tag me so I can come over and leave you some love. But give yourself this gift, choose one thing that will make you feel better about your business or about your business results today future you will thank you for it and if you want more like bite-sized no frills support inside of your business then I highly recommend that you come and take a look at Unshakable Business Academy. I'm currently enrolling for the next cohort of members and I have 10 spaces available this time around. I do cap it at 10 because I give a lot of personalized support to everybody inside of the container. Not only do they get the usual like fortnightly coaching calls and weekly Q and A's and all of that stuff, but every single person inside of the community also gets unlimited one-on-one Voxer support from me, which I know is an insane deal, but I am that level of invested in seeing every single one of you succeed, no matter what success means to you. So if that's the level of support that you have been craving recently, just hop over and take a look at the information page and see if it speaks to you. No pressure, no false urgency, just have a look, consider and then get back to me if you do have any specific questions then of course reach out to me on instagram and i'm more than happy to have a chat with you but do yourself a favor just take a look that's all from me today i'll be back next week to bring back that little rant that i promised you a while ago so i promised you an episode where i vent about how and where a lot of coaches and healers let themselves down. So I'm going to be giving you that gift next week. So make sure you tune in for that and I will see you there. Thank you for listening to Your Biz, Your Rules. I know that we all like to listen to podcasts, watch videos, read articles or books or posts on Facebook and not really do anything with that information. So I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you to take something from this episode, anything, and use it to spark action. Use it to activate some kind of change in the way you work and the way you live. Do yourself this service today. And tell me all about it on Instagram. Hop over, shoot me a DM, or share an Instagram story showcasing what action you are taking thanks to this episode and of course do all of the usual things subscribe leave a review let me know how much you love the show and i'll be back with you next week